Now let's talk about the typical flow rates. So people ask, you know, what's the flow rate? What's it based on? Well, it's really based on your column diameter. So most of us at HPLC are going to use the standard diameter column. That's 4.6 millimeter ID. If you're running that column, like most of us are, then you're going to run typically around one mill a minute. Now, if you really want to know the exact flow rate, what's the perfect flow rate, you got to come back and study a little bit of GC and LC theory because we got to understand some Van Diemter. But uh, let me give you my easy answer. If you're using a modern HPLC column, you're probably running, if you're a five micron or three and a half micron, you're running right around one mil a minute. It's pretty close to your optimum. Uh, if you have the 1.8 micron, you're probably running closer to two mils a minute of being your optimum. So if you're using a standard diameter column, you're running one, one and a half, two mils a minute. Personally, I'm a big fan of the higher, the better. Uh, the chromatography is almost as good, yet it's a lot faster. So one, one and a half, two mils a minute, that's where you're gonna be on a 4.6 millimeter ID column. Do not go below 0.8 mils a minute. There's no damage you do down there, but you're in the, what we call the bad part of the Van Diemter. Uh, everything gets bad down there. All the peaks are broader, resolution's worse, sensitivity's worse. So stay away from the very, very low flow rates if you're uh, running a standard 4.6 millimeter ID column. Now, a little caveat to that is always uh, respect the pressure limit of the column. If you're running really fragile columns, gel filtration columns, they have flow limitations because pressure limitations. But aside from that, most of us are running silica-based columns. We don't really care much about pressure. The next standard diameter is a 2.1 millimeter. If uh, you want to run that column, first question, why would you want to run that column? Well, we should, we should all want to because you could do every kind of chromatography we're doing today, but we could do it with 80% less solvent, 80% um, less to buy, 80% less to dispose of. But for the most part, most of us are happy at that 4.6 millimeter, one millimeter range. So it's the LCMS spec people that really are running the 2.1 millimeter columns. So 2.1 millimeter ID column, your typical flow, flow rate, 0.21 mils a minute is right around the optimum flow rate. So you're running, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mil a minute on that column, that's sort of the equivalent. So it's a factor of five difference. If you want to know the exact factor, uh, it's a ratio of the diameter squared, and you take th that's the, the ratio that you will use to adjust up or down in your flow rate. So 2.1 millimeter is 80% smaller. You should decrease your volumetric flow rate by 80%. You should decrease your injection volume by 80%. If you do that, you get the exact same chromatography. But in theory, you must also uh, decrease what's called your extra column volume by 80%. That means you got to get rid of 80% of all the tubing in your instrument if you want to get the same efficiency, the same chromatography. That's hard to do. So in real life, if you want to switch from 4.6 millimeter down to 2.1, you can do it, but replace all the tubing in your instrument, the green tubing, go to the red tubing, go from you know the 0.17 millimeter down to the 0.12 millimeter uh, uh, tubing, and it'll get you pretty close to being back where, where you belong. So what about the other direction? Would we ever want to scale up? Sure, that's called preparative scale uh, LC. Uh, 4.6 millimeter being standard for analytical. The next size up is a 10 millimeter column, and that we call semi-preparative, because at that scale, we can start collecting peaks. Well, you can collect them on any scale, but we can start almost being able to see the material. We're gonna approach the uh, you know, milligram quantity of material uh, coming out of that 10 millimeter column. Uh, the next size up, we go to a 21 millimeter column. When you're doing that, you're talking new HPLC instrument because you need a much higher flow rate. Standard LCs can go to five, maybe 10 mils a minute. If you trick them, if you set their pressure low enough, they can do 10 mils a minute, maybe. Um, that'll get you a 10 millimeter column. But if you want to go to the next size up, you're going to be in the 40 to 50 mil per minute range. You're going to need a, a prep scale version of the instrument. Um, scaling up is the exact same way as scaling down. We go by the ratio of the diameter squared, we scale up the volumetric flow rate, we scale up the injection volume, which means we're going to mass load a lot more material on the column. By the way, if you're ever doing preparative scale, um, we'll typically massively overload the column. We do that on purpose in order to increase our throughput. So uh, ask me that question if you want to know more about preparative scale, uh, send that question in and I'll do a little deeper dive on, on that one. Uh, so we've talked about column diameters, going up in diameter for preference scale, going down in diameter uh, if we are looking to do LCMS spec. There is an intermediate diameter out there, the three millimeter column. It's not terribly popular. It's, it's called the solvent saver. It's a great idea. I think more of us should be using it. Again, if we go to smaller diameter, we could get the same chromatography, but we're going to do it 
uh, using less, less solvent, um, better on the bottom line, and better for the planet, better for the environment. 